There are many terrifying places in this world, but few of the horrors they contain are as scary as radiation. When a site becomes thoroughly nuclear, you can't fight it, you can't outrun it, and you're pretty hard pressed to contain it too. No matter how well the location is cleaned and taken care of, the residual radiation can still affect the environment for hundreds of years or much, much longer. There are many extremely dangerous and rather creepy sites around the world contaminated with radiation, and in the video today, their stories. Number 10. The Polygon when the Soviet Union crumbled and Kazakhstan became independent, one of the first things they did was shut down the Polygon. The Soviet nuclear testing site had seen the tryout of nukes of various sizes for over four decades, and during its Cold War heyday, it was home to an estimated 25% of the world's nuclear tests. The site was originally chosen because it was unoccupied, but this didn't take into account the many villages that were located near its perimeter. Years of nuclear radiation bombarded the area, and eventually the residents of the safe villages started showing birth defects and various radiation-related illnesses. Today it is estimated that at least 100,000 Kazakhs near the Polygon area suffer from the effects of radiation. The radioactive materials at the Polygon itself will take hundreds of years to reach safe radiation levels, and the poor people suffering from these effects may do so for up to five generations. Number 9. Chernobyl It is impossible to discuss radioactive sites without bringing up Chernobyl. The 1986 nuclear power plant explosion in Ukraine is considered the worst nuclear disaster that the world has ever witnessed. Despite the fact that this disaster has been extensively researched, there are many questions that still remain. The most pressing of those questions concern the long-term health impacts of the people who were exposed to the radiation. Acute radiation sickness wreaked havoc among the first responders on the scene, but that was just the tip of the deadly eye. Iceberg. The nearby town of Pripyat was not evacuated until 36 hours after the disaster, and at that point many residents were already showing symptoms of radiation sickness. Despite all these clear signs that the situation was pressing, and the realization that the disaster sent nuclear winds blowing towards Belarus and into Europe, the Soviets still tried to play the situation close to their chest, right up until the radiation alarms at a nuclear plant all the way in Sweden went off, and the terrifying situation unfolded. Despite the scale of the Chernobyl disaster, its death toll in the short term was relatively moderate, being only 31 people dying in the disaster at its short-term after-effects. Still, the long-term effects of the people in the area were still unsafely high, though just how the disaster affected their lifespans is very difficult to measure. For instance, an estimated 6,000 cases of thyroid cancer in Ukraine, Russia, and Belarus may be connected to radiation exposure in some way, but it's borderline impossible to directly link them with the disaster. Number 8. Siberian Chemical Combine Plant Siberian Chemical Combine SCC, is an old uranium enrichment plant in Siberia. No surprises. When it comes to waste disposal, it was always a product of the patented Soviet, bah, we'll just put it wherever we want way of doing things. Significant amounts of the combine's liquid radioactive waste were pumped into underground pools of water. That would have probably been bad enough, even without the nuclear accident of 1993, which saw an explosion damage the radio technology part of the complex. The blast wrecked two floors of the building and, more importantly, destroyed a tank containing highly dangerous materials such as plutonium and uranium. The radioactive gas released by the incident contaminated 77 square miles of downwind terrain, and only sheer luck prevented the fumes from turning the nearby cities of Tomsk and Severisk into Fallout-style locations. The cleanup process it took four months, but for the locals, the disaster, it was just the beginning of the nightmare. They found out that there had been a whopping 22 accidents at the SCC over the years, and even during its normal operations, it released around 10 grams of plutonium into the atmosphere every year. For reference, it just takes one millionth of a gram to potentially cause serious diseases in humans. Number 7. Sellafield Sellafield is to Great Britain what Chernobyl is to Russia, the worst ever nuclear accident to happen in the country. In a way, it managed to be even more badly managed than its famous counterparts, or rather, it was managed in a more British way. When the Windscale No. 1 pile, a sort of primitive nuclear reactor of the Sellafield Nuclear Material Processing Factory, caught fire in October of 1957, 11 tons of uranium burned for three days. Despite this rather worrying situation, everyone went about their day as if nothing had happened. While the reactor was close to collapse and radioactive material spread across the nearby areas, no one was evacuated and work went on in the facility with a bit of a stiff upper lip. In fact, most people weren't even told about the fire. The workers realized that something was going on, but they were told to just carry on as normal. 
Meanwhile, a true disaster was just barely averted, and that was largely thanks to one heroic man. When the fire started, Deputy General Manager Thomas Tuhi was called on site from a day off. When it became apparent that the blaze could not be easily contained, he threw away his radiation recording badge so no one could see the doses that he was taking. Then he climbed into the top of the 80-foot reactor building and stared into the inferno below him while taking the full force of the radiation. He did this multiple times over the next few hours to assess the damage, and when the blaze started to reach the melting point of steel, he made the last-ditch call to use water to drown the pile. It was a risky maneuver that was untested on a reactor fire, and if anything had gone wrong, the entire area would have been made uninhabitable. Fortunately, Tuhoi's gambit paid off. After 30 hours of waterworks later, Sellafield was saved. While the area was thoroughly irradiated all the way down to its milk and chickens, Britain carried on with a stiff upper lip. Of course, to himself, who had basically wrestled with the burning reactor, eventually died. But he was a respectable 90. Number 6. The Somali Coast the coastal areas of Somalia are better known for their pirate activity than their nuclear materials, but that's just because the radioactive waste tends to be hidden under the surface. Weirdly enough, the two phenomena they actually have the same cause. The area's unrest during the 1980s led to a long period where the country had central rule, which left its shores unguarded. Unfortunately for Somalia's residents, this meant that every unscrupulous operator and their mother was free to cheaply dump their unwanted nuclear waste and other hazardous waste along the country's coastline instead of disposing of it in a safer and more expensive manner. The United Nations have been aware of the problem for years and describe it as a very serious situation. It was further aggravated in 2009 when a large tsunami made the problem literally resurface. The wave dislodged and broke many of the containers, causing contaminants to spread at least six miles inland. The cocktail of radioactive materials and assorted toxic sludges caused a host of serious health problems for the residents and may have even contaminated some of the groundwater. Number 5. Mayak even before Chernobyl, there were whispers that the Soviet Union's track record with nuclear power wasn't exactly spotless. Some have said whispers were almost certainly about the Mayak complex, which was the country's first nuclear site. Built in the remote southern Urals shortly after World War II, Mayak was a secret military site that was near the closed down town of Chelyabinsk and specialized in manufacturing plutonium for the army. Its secretive nature eventually came in handy for the Soviet government. In 1957, the complex suffered one of the worst little known nuclear disasters when an accident at the facility contaminated 7,700 square miles of the nearby area, which affected roughly 270,000 people. The incident would eventually become known as the Kistham disaster disaster after the nearest town. At the time, however, the authorities fully played the secret facility card and released little information about the crisis. The true scale of the disaster it would not emerge until the Soviet Union collapsed in the 1990s. It took until 2009 for villages nearest to the Mayak facility to be relocated, and even then, most of them were just moved a little over a mile up the road. Number 4. Church Rock Uranium Mill In 1979, a spill at the Church Rock Uranium Mill in New Mexico sent 1,100 tons of uranium mine tailings and 94 million gallons of effluent into the Puerco River, spreading contamination some 50 miles downstream. Together, these released three times more radiation than the notorious Three Mile Island nuclear accident. To this day, the Church Rocksville remains the largest accidental release of radioactive material in the United States, and its damage to the environment was wholesale. Radioactivity was in water, animals, plants, and eventually the Navajo population of the area, who suffer from an increased likelihood of birth defects and kidney disease. The disaster is particularly tragic because it would have been perfectly avoidable. The spill happens because one of the dams holding the United Nuclear Corporation's disposal ponds at bay cracked. Later, both the corporation itself and various federal and state inspectors Actors noted that the rock that it had been built on was unstable. Number 3. Fukushima On March 11, 2011, the Great East Japan Earthquake moved the entire Japanese nation several feet east and sent tsunami waves washing over the country's shorelines, causing a death toll of 19,000 people and the worst nuclear plant disaster in the country's history. Initially, it was deemed that the Fukushima Daiichi power plant had withstood the watery onslaught and that all of its reactors had automatically shut down and survived without any significant damage. However, the plant was not quite as tsunami-proof as everyone had assumed, and it soon 
became evident that the wave had disabled the cooling systems and power supply for three of the reactors. Within three days, their cores had largely melted, and a fourth reactor also started showing signs of trouble. The government evacuated roughly 100,000 people from the area and engaged in a battle to cool the reactors with water, and even more importantly, to prevent radioactive materials leaking into the environment. Since the facility is just 100 yards away from the ocean on an area that's prone to various natural disasters, the cleanup process is a difficult but urgent task. The radiation inside the plant is so deadly that it's impossible to enter the facility, so no one's even sure precisely where the molten fuel is within the plant. In a massive, unprecedented challenge that's estimated to take decades, the cleanup officials are currently mapping the terrain with radiation measuring robots and hoping that strong robots are eventually able to seal and retrieve the radioactive substances from the premises. Number 2. Mailu Su Mailusu is a town in Kyrgyzstan that not only lives under the constant shadow of Soviet-era radiation, but has actually made its peace with that fact. Some locals joke that they actually need radiation to survive. You can get walking doors to the worst radioactive dumps, followed by a healthy dose of vodka to flush the radioactivity out of your system. The town is one of the largest concentrations of radioactive material in the former Soviet Central Asia. Because the area is naturally rich in uranium, the Soviet Union mined it to death, while toxic waste was all buried around town. All in all, some 2 million cubic meters of radioactive waste lie under gravel and concrete in 23 different dumping sites around Milo Su. The sites are often just lazy piles of hazardous material lying in their deteriorating bunker pits, half-heartedly marked with barbed wire and concrete posts. Unfortunately, this makes Mailusu both a current crisis and a future, potentially much worse one. The dumping sites are located right by a fast-moving water source, the Mailusu River, which is a water supply for 2 million people downstream. What's more, the area is tectonically active and extremely prone to landslides. This has already led to one nasty disaster in 1992, where one of said landslides busted open one of the waste dumps and a thousand cubic meters of radioactivity spilled into the river. Number 1. The Hanford Site in the 1950s, America was happily entering the atomic age, and the nuclear site in Hanford, Washington was where the future was made. The plant had already made its mark in the 1940s during the Manhattan Project, for which it was built to produce the plutonium required for the nukes. After the war, the future seemed bright in more than one way. Although every kilogram of plutonium the site produced came with a side order of hundreds of thousands of gallons of radioactive waste, the site's enterprising owners believed that they could sell that. Unfortunately, they couldn't, and they also hadn't bothered to create ways to store the deadly sludge. As years went by, temporary underground containers quietly became permanent, cracked, and allowed their radioactive contents to seep into the ground. The Atomic Energy Commission, which oversaw the manufacture of nuclear bombs, didn't even bother to set up an office for waste management, so unregulated radioactive material ended up buried wherever. In the end, Hanford and its nearby areas were so saturated with radioactive waste and strange toxic sludges that the site became the largest nuclear cleanup site in the entire Western Hemisphere. The cleanup process has gone on for decades and caused health problems for dozens of workers and costs in the billions. However, the treatment plant that's meant to deal with the sludge is yet to materialize. In fact, the area is still so deeply dangerous that when they started to demolish the site's plutonium finishing plant in 2017, 42 workers became exposed to radioactive particles despite all of the precautions. So I hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please do hit that thumbs up button below and don't forget to subscribe. I got brand new videos on this channel every day of the week. Another channel where I do daily videos is called Today I Found Out. I'm going to link to that below. If you like this channel, I think you'll like that as well. So check it out. There's a link below. And as always, thank you for watching.